Known as a heavily physical defenseman, Jacob Truba has been terrorizing his opponents pretty much from day one. And besides possessing a natural bite to his game, Truba has also developed the reputation of treading the line of legality quite a bit, as several of his hits have either injured, briefly sidelined, or in one case, was even cause for a trip to the hospital. In this video, we're going to go over several of the top jerk moments from Truba himself. And with that, here are the top six jerk moments from Jacob Truba. So obviously this one is ranked so low because it was a hit attempt, meaning that no contact was made. However, the potential that it had to do damage grants it a spot on the list. Anyways, most of his fans know that the NHL playoffs are like a different style of hockey within the hockey. While the regular season is competitive and still matters, the playoffs are even more intense, considering that it's do or die. And I think it's fair to say that throughout the playoffs of 2022, Truba decided to Truba at a higher level than usual. From Sidney Crosby to Seth Jarvis, players on the opposing teams were getting injured due to receiving hits from number eight. Max Domi is another one we could bring up too, but despite getting hit up high, he was able to remain in the game. So the Rangers made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals following the defeats to Pittsburgh and Carolina. However, waiting patiently after sweeping Florida was the defending back-to-back -back champs at the time, the Tampa Bay Lightning. And it was during game five in the Big Apple that Truba decided to cross the line. In the final frame of play amid a tied game, Truba could be shown approaching the blue line ready to defend against Andre Pilat. After Truba's attempt at poking the puck away went south, he then shifted strategies. Instead of raising and shifting his body weight in an effort to try and minimize injury, Truba could be shown remaining level with Pilat and extending his elbow. Even though the hit didn't happen again and therefore no discipline was dealt, the attempt still managed to create some chatter throughout social media. Steve Dangle, The Athletic's Josh Yeo, and NHL.com's Dan Rosen were among just a few of some well-known names throughout the hockey world that spoke out about the almost injury. One thing is for certain, Karma managed to get the last slap here as Truva ended up falling head first after missing his opponent. Now, in case you thought that the last incident was a one-time occurrence, think again. This time, we're going to fast forward a few months after Tampa Bay won the conference finals in 2022. The Rangers, who were facing a division rival in MSG, were hoping to break a tie in the first period and take the lead against the Devils. And it was towards the tail end of a New York power play that Truba decided to make a beeline from center ice to Captain Nico Heischer. In similar fashion as the last jerk moment, Truba could be shown bending down slightly with his legs spread far apart and his elbow cocked at Heischer's head level. Likely due to the lengthy distance Truba traveled prior to, Heischer had enough time to prepare and to react when Truba attempted to make contact. And yet again, as karma would have it, Truba could be shown falling into the boards afterwards. While there are a margin of fans that believe Jacob Truba always hits clean, there's also ample evidence to suggest that no, he's not 100% of the time. And the incident that happened last season in NYC is yet another reason as to why that's the case. In the remaining minutes of the second period in a game against the Montreal Canadiens, Truba decided to wander into Montreal's zone. Reason being, instead of focusing on retrieving the puck, he went in with the intention just to hit Yol Armia. Armia, who was intending to break out, was met with a vicious elbow from his opponent. As any hockey player knows, the equipment that is under jerseys doesn't allow for much protection in the rib and hip areas. Due to this fact, Armia was shown to be an immense discomfort on the bench directly afterwards. Remember earlier in the video when I made mention of the Seth Jarvis injury? 
Well, since there was actually injury as a result of this one, I decided to save it for later in the video. As I alluded to, this moment is going to take us back to the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. The Rangers, who had managed to hold their own quite well against the Carolina Hurricanes, were fixing to close out the series in Game 7, and it was during the final five minutes of the opening period that things took a rather scary turn of events for Seth Jarvis. After Jarvis received the puck on the Rangers' end, Truba, who was crouched down quite a bit, made contact with his opponent's head. Here we can see Truba's elbows slightly raised as he's closing in on the rookie. This immediately dazed Jarvis, who was barely able to make it off of the ice in result. Later, he recanted how severe the effects from the hit he sustained really were. According to an article from Yahoo Sports, the forward only was able to remember his team being on an early power play, watching some of the third period from the sidelines, and teammate Jesperi Katkinemi driving him home. And other than that, nothing until midway this, through the second day. Obviously, Jarvis was diagnosed with a concussion thereafter. And yet again, no penalty came about due to the play, and no post-game discipline was dealt to Truba. At this point in his career, it may come as a surprise to those who don't know, but Truba has only been suspended on one occasion at the NHL level. And the incident that caused the suspension to happen came about during the defenseman's days with the Winnipeg Jets. Back in 2017, amid a regular season contest in Canada's capital, Truba, who saw Mark Stone entering the zone, decided to approach his opponent. Now, it's not the fact that Truba decided to hit Stone, that's the issue. Clearly, Stone had just passed the puck, therefore he was fair game. The issue that player safety took with the hit was the fact that Stone's head was the main point of contact. Truba could be shown even lifting his shoulder, which left no doubt in the minds of those reviewing the hit that Truba wasn't thinking of Stone's safety first and foremost. Also, due to the fact that Stone wasn't falling, turning, or moving in any way that would cause his direction to change, it was looked at as an illegal check to the head. Besides receiving a minor penalty in game for the hit, Truba was made to set out for two games upon receiving the suspension. It's a clear hit to the head with the shoulder, Senators coach at the time, Guy Boucher, told reporters. It's one of the best players in the league, so I mean, I think everybody saw the same thing. In result of his actions, Truba was made to forfeit over $33,000. Stone, who didn't return to the game following the hit, missed two games as well due to having a concussion. And finally, the most recent incident of them all. Just minutes into the second period between Boston and the New York Rangers, play was stopped due to Jonathan Quick freezing the puck. However, as the whistle was being blown, Jacob Truba was in quite the tussle with Trent Frederick. Now, there were a lot of mixed reviews and feelings about this. Some argued that Frederick had Truba's stick, and as Truba was trying to get it back, the momentum caused his stick blade to make its way to the forward's head, somehow with force. If we watch carefully at the start, it was one hand that was tied up by Frederick. Then the hand holding the stick was the one that guided the twig to commit the high stick. While some, again, argue that it looked accidental, most of us that have been fans long enough know that a player is always responsible for their stick regardless. However, the league didn't completely agree that Truba was in the right here as they dealt the captain a $5,000 fine. Obviously, since it involved a high stick to the head, it was shocking that he didn't receive his second career suspension. It was an accident. Frederick and I were both surprised, but it can't happen, Truba told Sportsnet. I have to control my posture and my stick. I deserve the fine. In conclusion, it really is baffling how much Truba has evaded player safety, considering how many times he's crossed the line. Knowing Truba, though, I'm sure he's going to continue to give us a steady stream of content, aka jerk moments to talk about. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't. And if you're already subscribed and consuming my content regularly, I'd like to invite you to join my Patreon. Plans start at just a dollar a month and offer perks such as unseen analytics, monthly shoutouts, and video previews. To support me, simply click the link below to get started. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.